tibial pylon fracture. It is a high energy axial load injury. This injury is characterized by a major soft tissue injury because it's a high energy fracture and the fracture can be open or closed. Also, the joint is usually involved and the metaphysis of the tibia is usually involved. Concepts of pylon fracture. No immediate open reduction and in internal fixation because the soft tissue is bad. An early RIF is not recommended. Initially, the treatment is usually close reduction and splint, followed by staged open reduction internal fixation. And you're going to start by applying external fixer and you're going to delay the open reduction internal fixation. After you apply the external fixer, then you get a CT scan. By doing it this way, you will decrease the incidence of wound complication and deep infection. And when you use fixation, it is better to use minimally invasive fixation. A soft tissue condition should improve before definitive surgery. Wait one to three weeks, depending on the magnitude of the anticipated surgery and the presence of the wrinkle test. After application of external fixture, get a CT scan to check the joint and the fragments. This will help you to select the best operative approach in the future after the soft tissue condition improves. The physician should be aware the AP radiograph may look okay, but it can be misleading. The joint usually has three fragments attached to ligaments. Because the ligaments are intact, the fragments can be pulled by the external fixer, and that is called ligamentotaxis. The three fragments are the medial malleolus, which is attached to the deltoid ligament, the anterolateral fragment, which is called the chaput fragment, and it is attached to the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament. In children, it's called the talo fracture, and if the fracture involves avulsion of the fibula, it's called vagistaff fracture. The Volkman fragment is the posterolateral fragment and it is attached to the posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament. In this CT scan, you can see the three fragments of the pylon fracture and also you can see the joint impaction. When the fibula is intact, the lateral collateral ligament of the ankle may rupture. Driving. The break travel time returns to normal six weeks after initiation of weight bearing. In ankle fractures, it returns to normal nine weeks after fixations, means nine weeks postoperatively. Surgery. The goal is anatomic reduction and destabilization of the articular surface. You may start with fixation of the fibula with a plate or with a screw. In some cases, the screw is better. Fibular plate may add stability to the external fixture of the tibia, especially if there is a defect of the metaphysis of the tibia.
When there is a metaphyseal defect of the tibia, plating of the fibula can enhance the stiffness of the external fixture. So it is a good thing. Approaches are many and it varies between limited approach or extensile approach. In any case, try to protect the superficial perineal nerve. Make sure there is a distance between incisions of no less than 7 cm. And that, of course, is controversial. Everybody agrees that stage RIF is the best. The arthritis occurs in about 50% of cases and increases with time. And arthrodesis is rare. Usually after two years, most of the patient return to work despite having some pain. Significant disability in physical function was noted even with successful treatment in short form survey 36. In pylon fractures, the SF36 scale is lower than in patients with pelvic fractures, multiple trauma, and AIDS. Patient socioeconomic factors are predictive of the clinical outcome, and the outcome really did not correlate with reduction of the fracture or with the arthritis. Improvement in function and pain may take up to two years, and eventually about 10 to 15 percent may need arthrodesis. What do you do if you have pylon fracture with fracture of the tibial shaft? You will do fixation of the articular surface, usually percutaneously. Then you will do fixation of the tibial shaft, usually with IM rodding. When you use external fixture around the ankle, you can put the pins in the calcaneus or in the talus. And this is the technique that can show you how I do that. I usually put the calcaneal pin from the medial side of the ankle. We got to be aware of the location of the neurovascular structures. Try to avoid the bulge area because it has the neurovascular structures. I usually put it at the posterior medial area as outlined here. And you're going to insert the pen in a transverse direction. When you use external fixture, it's better to keep the pins away from the area of future incisions. When you put the pins in the talus, you should insert it from medial to lateral, from anterodistal to the anterior colliculus of the medial malleolus, and the placement should be in 10 degree anterocephalad direction. The three principles of anatomic reduction, stable internal fixation, and early range of motion, they are great principles. However, it is not possible to achieve all these three principles in every case of pylon fracture.